Now, there's good evidence and there's bad evidence. Bayes' theorem is remarkable, not only in that it tells us what is and isn't good evidence, but it helps us quantify how strong that evidence is. Bayes' theorem tells us how much we should update our beliefs or how much we should change our expectations when the new evidence comes in. Bayes' theorem distinguishes between weak evidence and strong evidence. Let's do another one of those thought experiments. What if I told you that last night I went to a concert? Now, let's say you're a good friend of mine, you get nosy, and you ask, well, did you go with anybody? What you're really fishing for is, did I take a date? Now, what if I decide to be coy? I might say something to you like, yes, the person I took last night had blue eyes. Well, let's look at this in terms of the P's. Now, what you really want to know is, was I with another guy or did I take a woman? Let's say there were 2,000 people at the concert last night. Each P on the plate can represent one person at the concert. Now, you have to assume that I was with one of the persons at the concert. But not knowing anything else, all you can surmise is that half the people at the concert were men and half the people at the concert were women. So I can draw a line down the center and say there were a thousand men and a thousand women at the concert, roughly. So not knowing anything else, all you could say is that there's a 50-50 chance I was with a man or a woman. You really don't have an answer to your question. But I told you this person I was with had blue eyes. Now in a group of average Americans, not knowing anything else about our nationality, 30% of the people have blue eyes. But that 30% number isn't particular to men or women. So you can place your red evidence bubble around all the people with blue eyes, since I told you you now live in a universe where the person I took to the concert had blue eyes. But unfortunately, one-third of the men, or about 333, are going to have blue eyes, and about one-third of the women, or 333, are going to have blue eyes. So now when we do our Bayesian updating and zoom in on the area where the red evidence bubble is our new reality, you're still only 50% certain that I was with a man or that I was with a woman. I haven't really told you anything useful, which was my intention. It turns out that eye color is a poor test for gender. Now, what if I decide to be a little more open? I might throw you another hint. I might give you a very good hint. What if I tell you that the person I was with last night was wearing Escape by Calvin Klein? Now let's look at what that does to our P universe. So we're looking at our plate full of P's again with 2,000 P's representing the men and the women who attended this concert. Given that and the fact that I was with somebody at that concert only tells you there's a 50-50 chance I was with a man or a woman. But let's apply this evidence. Escape is a woman's fragrance, so I wouldn't expect any man to be intentionally wearing escape at the concert. Now, with all the fragrances on the market, I wouldn't expect a lot of women to be wearing escape either. But since you know I was at the concert with somebody wearing escape, there's at least one, probably a couple. Let's say there were three women wearing escape and zero men. My red evidence bubble is pretty small, but it's clearly tipped to the feminine side. When I do my Bayesian updating, I now am pretty certain that the person I was with was a woman. In this case, I gave you very good evidence. So there was no mathematical connection between eye color and the hypothesis at hand in a Bayesian sense. But the question of what fragrance this woman was wearing did make a difference. That's why there must be a Bayesian connection between evidence in the real world and our beliefs in order for us to increase our knowledge. We can observe all kinds of facts, but not all of those facts will serve as strong evidence for a particular proposition. 
And what's even more amazing, if there's no evidence at all, we probably have no justification for believing a particular idea. The idea is better thought of as a guess or an opinion than knowledge. We really don't know anything about it. If you've ever talked to someone who's involved in the world of artificial intelligence, you'll understand now why they're so interested in Bayesian networks and Bayesian inferences. That's where the knowledge lies. Now please, check out the next few videos. There's a lot more fascinating relationships that Bayes' theorem will help us clarify.